Hey there friends, welcome to the very first video from VIP Brigade. My name's Justin, I am the uh, creator and founder of VIP Brigade. And uh, for this first video, we're going to be focusing on the P for pipes and tobacco. VIP Brigade is an acronym that stands for a lot of uh, fun things that I enjoy and would love to share with you guys. So I'm coming to you tonight from uh, Branson, Missouri in the beautiful Ozark Mountains. I am actually outside on my back porch doing this voiceover for the video that you're about to watch. So if you hear crickets and uh, frogs and even the occasional car maybe drive by off in the distance, uh, just know that I am. It's about midnight and I am sitting here with my IMP block Meerschaum that I got from Meerschaum Market. I'm having some GLP spark plug and I'm ready to uh, show you guys how I make my jar labels for my mason jars uh, for my cellar and things of that nature. So um, just stay tuned here and I'm going to walk you through as best as I can and show you how I do it. So here's your little layout of the materials that I use to make these labels. It's not a lot. I use a matte white sticker paper by Astro Designs. I don't know if they make a photo or a gloss finish, but my printer doesn't do a very good job of that, so I got the matte, and it's all they had. I use the clear packing tape to put over the top of it to protect it and keep it glossy looking, and then there's just a large pair of scissors to cut out the circular labels for the jars. And then I have a cardstock paper trimmer there with the straight edge to make the date labels that go on the bottom of the jars, which I'll be showing you in the video as well. So at this point, I think I'll take you over to the desktop and we'll get started on the procedure of actually designing and making these labels. So at this point, just go to your internet browser of choice. I go to smokingpipes.com. They have a very good layout of lots of different blends. And most of the time they have very good pictures. Here I'm just going, uh, looking up some Esoterica because I did score a few tens of that uh, about a week or two ago. And I'm doing Dorchester here. That's one of the new ones that I had come in. So take the image, right click it, and save as a JPEG. And after you save it, you can see here is my fold folder of all the other labels that I've made in the past. Type it in. I like to keep mine very categorized, alphabetical order, things of that nature. Once you save it, then go and download if you don't have this get paint.net it's free to download and it makes these labels so much easier to make and i'll show you why so go to open and find your label that you just saved when you open it you will go over and select ellipse select and if you hold down the shift key it'll make a perfect circle around this label after you cut that, then you can go to a new page and it makes the size perfect for that circle that you selected. Now, to adjust the size of the circle, you can move the actual image or you can move the selection. So make sure you click on selection and move the little dotted line circle around, adjust it and fit it perfectly to the label and then cut. All right, after you cut, open a new page and after you open that page, it'll automatically give you, as I said, the perfect size. And then when you paste, it'll be a perfect image for the right size, which we will then transfer over to Microsoft Word here in a sec. So all you have to do is type in what you already saved and bring it back up and just save over the top of it. You don't have to save it as an extra file. Just replace it. It says it's already, it already exists. That's fine. Replace it. Now you have this perfectly cropped out label that's ready to be printed. At this point, I am opening up another label that doesn't have the circular tin on it. This is a bag of Blackpool. I did get some of that in the mail. So I'm going to do the same thing. You just go and you make the ellipse by holding down the shift key to make a perfect circle. Go over to move the selection and not the actual picture. And then once you get it where you want it, cut it. Hit new. This is why I love paint.net. Other programs might do it, but paint.net's free. And then once you open and hit paste, it's already there. So then at this point, you go to save as. 
type in the name in which you saved your original picture, click on it, it'll ask you if you want to replace it, and uh, hit yes, replace, and it's already there and good to go. So there's Blackpool, it's all done, and this is the point where we go to Microsoft Word. Once you open up Microsoft Word, click on blank document, and we're gonna start from scratch here. First thing I like to do is go to layout. So go up to layout, and we're gonna change the margins. That, that way you can fit 15 labels as I did. Click on narrow, and it'll give you guidelines. If you move out to the edge, it'll show where the outside is. So then go to insert, and shapes. Once you get to shapes, go down to oval, and this will be kind of the same thing we did on paint.net. Click oval, hold down the shift key, and for sizes in the US, it's about two and one eighth inches. For my friends outside of the US, it's 54 millimeters on the metric system. Once you have it, I like to change the outline to black. That gives you a good guideline to trim around. So change the outline to black, go to fill, and you can either change it to white or no fill either way. Once you have that, right click it and then copy it. And then you can paste it and do this as many times as you want. Like I said, for a standard mouth jar, I fit 15 on a page. And then you can save this as a, as a template. So right click one of the circles and click fill, scroll down and click picture. All right, once you click picture, you can bring up from a file and then go to whichever folder you have all your labels. You can see the ones that I've created in the past plus the ones that I've done today. Find the ones that are most recent that you'd need to print. For me, this is Dorchester as we just worked on. And boom, it inserts it perfectly right there. So that was a good example. Now I'm gonna bring up my template and add all the ones that I actually printed that you saw at the beginning of the video. And we do the same thing. You right click and fill picture and then from file, go to your folder I'm gonna redo my other Esotericas and print the new ones that just came in the mail. Some of them were a little bit off on color. I wanted them to be a little closer in hue and shade and brightness, things like that. So I played with them a little. And I'm also gonna add in one that I redone that I made from scratch for uh, bourbon barrel aged plum pudding. Then after that, you just go to print and you'll have something that ends up like this here. I did add a few more for the video. I lay it down on a table, a flat surface. I take my clear packing tape and I lay it across all the way from left to right. And then it just all lifts up as one sheet. And then you can take your scissors and cut off all the excess paper and the tape and get it out of the way. Then you cut out your rough individual pieces like so. And then you can polish it up and go around and you end up with your perfect labels that you put on top of the jar. A few custom ones I wanted to show you guys. Here's some from Sutliff Tobacco Company where I just took their logo and added the name and matched up the colors. Then there's a couple from Cornell and Deal here where I took the main picture and then added their brand name to it in the same color so I'll know, you know what brand it is and it just looks nice. And then I have a custom one for just for him that I frequently visit in Springfield, Missouri with the white banner. It's just a template where I can add whatever blend I want and then a custom from Gawith and Hogarth there. Now here's where the cardstock cutter comes into place. You can see how I'm taking extra paper from a sheet where I only printed, you know, three or four labels. And what you can do, and you can do this with scissors too. I just happen to have this. You can get them cheap at any craft store. And you just zip along there and find you a size that works. And what I do is I make a bunch of these. You can see up in the upper part of the screen there, there's a, an empty tin that says tobacco labels. That's where I put the extra sticker labels for the tops of the jars and then I keep these on hand at all times because I'm constantly updating my jars. So once you get your long strips, turn it around the other way, you know, and just make whatever whatever kind of labels comfortable for you. You could buy pre-made stickers if you want to, it, that would be fine. This is just, I'm making use of leftover paper because I needed one day to print, you know, three or four labels for jars, not 15. And I make these extras and you can see them here in a pile and then I put them all nice and neat inside of this empty tin here. And then it's gonna be put on the bottom of the jars here. I take the tin date and the date I jarred it so I can kind of keep up with it. Now at this point, we're actually getting to the jars and putting the labels on. That sticker paper has pre-cuts in the back so you can just kind of fold it over, peel the backing off 
and put it on the jar, press it down nice. And then to center it up on the jar so it sits straight every time, this did have tobacco in it, but use an empty jar if you'd like. Put it in your cubby where it's gonna stay. Eyeball it, put it up there nice where it looks good. And this is the part that really helps me out. Take a Sharpie and make three marks or four marks, just as long as you can have enough to where when they line up, you know that it's in the same spot every time when you put the ring back on. So you're not having to fight it and you don't have crooked labels in your um, storage unit or your storage shelf, wherever you put them. You can see here's the marks. Put your lid back on. Once you line those marks up and when you put it back in the slot every time. Oh, here I am opening it back up. Sorry. And uh, then put your ring back on. And then whenever you go to set it back in the slot, it goes in perfect every time. And you always have nice upright labels. It looks nice and neat and tidy. But then we run into these Cornell and Deal style tins that don't have the perfect sticker on top that you can get a nice aerial view of. So let's go back to smokingpipes.com. I recently had some Sun Bear come in and it has the wrapper, not a sticker on top. So we need to save this image, open it up in paint.net and we need to manipulate the image and make it more of a square so we can fit a perfect circle around the design we want. So after that's done, you might need to mess with it a little bit, you know, you can see me here adjusting the circle, getting it just right. When I find where I like it, I cut it and I go to make a new image, but notice how small it comes up. So by the time that's blown up and printed onto a sticker label, it might be blurry. So as I bring it up here, I just don't like the quality of it. It's a little faded. Of course you could change the colors, but so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Google and I'm gonna just go to images and I'm gonna type in the tobacco I need, in this case, Sun Bear. So click on images and then go to tools and you can click on size and find large and it'll bring up some of the best results. So here's from a different website and sometimes it won't let you save the image. Uh, it tries to save it as a different format. Just copy the image, that works too. And then you can just save it in paint. So I copied this image, I open a new file and it, you can see here whenever I put the circle around it, here it is on the right. The quality's better, the color is better. So that's my method of making some of the labels that aren't a perfect circle to begin with. Guys, thanks for joining me on my very first YouTube video. I do have a couple shout outs and people I gotta give credit to. One is Mutton Chop Piper. I know he's a very common name in the pipe community. A lot of people love him. He gave me the initial idea for making the labels for my jars. Also, if you notice the, the black shelf made out of foam core, I basically copied that from him nearly down to a T completely. Uh, but his idea for the labels as well uh, got me to trying my own different ways. And then I came across a guy named uh, Babyface Huey. He is the one who gave me the idea to use Microsoft Word to get those perfect circles printed out that helped a lot to just be able to transfer that straight over otherwise uh that's it for this first video uh be on the lookout for more because like i said it's not just it's not just pipes every single letter in vip brigade stands for something v is vintage and vinyl the i is for in instruments and music i i'm a musician here in branson and i play multiple instruments uh the p is for pipes and pins and puzzles i have a lot of different things that i enjoy photography so uh just be on the lookout for more videos like subscribe comment share this with your friends and give me some feedback i'd love to know what you guys want to see what you thought about this video and let me know if i helped you and lastly if you don't mind go give me a follow on instagram vip underscore brigade i do post daily or at least i try to if not maybe every other day Lots of more interesting things, uh, beard related, old coins, antiques, uh, there's a lot to be discovered. So uh, give me a follow and keep in touch and I'll see you next time.